God has made it clear that we are his preferred agents of change to the world through the Holy Spirit. But sometimes, when truly no one is available, he'll go straight for us himself. This is Ali, and he met Jesus while hanging out at Mecca. Yeah, you heard me, Mecca, the epicenter for the Muslim faith. When he was younger, Ali was a raging alcoholic, and his drinking got so bad that he moved away from his wife and children in Turkey to Saudi Arabia, simply to protect them from himself. While there, some Muslim friends of his talked him into going on Hajj to Mecca, the great pilgrimage to the holiest place in Islam. So I decided to go. And when I went there, everybody needs to sleep together. And everybody also goes seven times around the Kaaba. And they were also going to do the namaz. And there I said, well, maybe something good will come of it. And I did the namaz, the ritual prayers also. But I was very ashamed because I didn't believe in it, and yet I was still doing it. So everybody that night sleeps around the Kaaba. So I slept there. And then in the night, I had this dream. And in the dream, Jesus came. First, he touched my forehead with his hand, and he said, you have been saved. You have been saved. Then he opened his hand and placed it on my chest. And he said, you belong to me. One of them, he said, you are saved, and then you belong to me. And he was smiling. And this is what I wanted to say. This is what he looked like. From his waist up, he was naked and shining pure white. He had a beard, like in the pictures, but a little bit longer. His hair and his beard, it was as if every hair was electrified light shining from every hair. That's how handsome he was. And when he smiled, his teeth were shining white. And I was amazed at the way he stood there. And the lower part of him was like a cloud of melted iron. And in that cloud, he was taken up. And then a voice from here started to talk and it was really moving around, in the same way that your mouth moves around when you talk. This voice started from right here. That's how it felt to me. So I woke up my friend, and I said to my friend, hey, look, do you hear that voice? He said, no. I said, but I've had this dream. I saw Jesus. He said, you ate too much food last night. You've gotten sick. Go back to sleep. What business does Jesus have in Muhammad's capital? So I tried to go back to sleep, but the voice wouldn't let me. It kept talking to me, just like I'm talking to you. And when it was morning time, the friends came over to me and they said, let's continue on the pilgrimage. And the voice was saying, no, you're not going to go. It wouldn't let me. And the voice was saying to me, go and collect all your stuff and go back to your country, look for your friends and find them. I didn't understand, but I made up my mind. Okay, I've decided I'm not going to go. I didn't understand it myself. So then I went and took a shower so that I could go back to where I had been. So in order to take a shower, I got undressed. And I looked in this little mirror, and this part was white. But at that time, my hair, my beard, my mustache, there wasn't a single white hair anywhere. And there was this white everywhere. And so I tried to wipe it off. And when I wiped it, it didn't come off. I wiped it with water and soap, and it still didn't go away. And this voice said to me, I'm going to show you even more things than this. And then, since I knew it was Jesus, 
right there in the bathroom. I got down on my knees, because the only thing I knew to worship was to go down on my knees. So I got on my knees, and I said, yes, Jesus, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. It's been years since this encounter, and his hair is beginning to gray, but to this day, his chest hair is still white where Jesus touched him in his dream.